Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I want to bring to you this really cool buck boost regulator. It's from Picor. Well, owned by Vicor. Uh, really cool part. If you can see my fingers there, there's this part down here, roughly a half inch square, and the part above is the inductor. That little guy down there is the buck boost regulator. All right really neat part uh, really efficient they say up to I think over 98 percent efficient in the right settings over 200 watts in the right configuration I think it goes up to 35 volts so at the high voltage you get more power because it can only put out so much current at the higher voltage you get the higher power now I'm gonna put out 24 volts in this test I'm gonna try to get we're going to see if we can do it without a fan around 100, 140 watts. Seems unbelievable, right? I mean, there's really no mass. It's pretty small. We're going to give it a go. Based on the specs, it seems like it should. It's going to be very impressive if it does. Uh, hey, by the way, so the other thing that this part does is it gives I squared C out if you want that. Haven't played with that yet. It also has a built-in op ramp or differential amp, like an op amp that you can, you know, use for whatever purpose, and it has a high side current sense that you can use as well. I believe it has a current sense built in, but you can use that high side current sense if you like. It has some other features. It's really, you know, feature rich part. It's a pretty amazing part. Uh, single quantities it's like 20 bucks I'm not sure where the price point is 100 units or 1000 units it drops in half the inductor starts off around f just over four dollars I believe and drops in half around 100 pieces or close to half uh, 250 maybe just one point though is for this part to be as cool as it is by the way it's a cool power part that's their I think their trade name um, but to be to be that cool part to be that really high efficient part to be optimized like that they had to partner with this specific inductor from Coiltronics okay the good thing is Coiltronics is owned by Eaton Corporation now and big companies so you don't have to worry about those parts being hard to find but it is partnered with that part so that it can be best optimized I believe I'm sure that's why they did it so hey let's bring it over here and test and by the way as far as test goes how do we characterize this well we want to check the efficiency at some power level some high power level right the other thing we want to do is we bring it up as you bring up a converter like this you want it to turn on in a specific voltage and then you want it to turn off at a little bit lower voltage and that's because if it turns on and because it's pulling current through your wires or your can you know copper trace or whatever on the board and if it drops the voltage a little bit you know from that load then it'll turn off and then turn on turn off and it sits there and toggles so there's hysteresis built into these things so that they don't do that so that they have to drop say I don't know four tenths of a volt half a volt you know a few tenths of a volt before uh, they'll turn themselves off so that history sees we want to check that operating point I, I like to do that when I bring a regulator up and we will uh, also check uh, load step response so that's where we take the load from let's say zero zero load to I don't know 100 watts pretty severe uh, but we take a big load step like that sometimes it's good to take it say from 30 percent minimum load you know down say three amps to say seven amps you know but we're going to take it at a bigger swing and what we want to do is look at the output voltage to see what kind of load response we have see how well it's behaved okay and then one of the other things we want to do is at no load situation when we first bring it up we're also going to look at you know how much power it takes just to sit there and idle uh, if it's an efficient part and we don't have a load maybe we've got a load turned off uh, we want to see how how much headroom it takes to run this thing so we'll check the power at the no load situation and then we'll check the efficiency at the higher load we'll also check the voltage ripple at both those points now 
this guy's going to have a couple operational points. At the low load, it's not putting out a lot of current. Well, it's going to design. It's going to be designed so that it tries to maintain some efficiency, and without a load going through the output inductor, regulators sometimes have trouble with that. So they have various modes of operation to do that. Sometimes they just go in pulse skipping, and sometimes they go into burst mode, or you know, resonant mode. They have different kinds of modes. So we're going to watch to see what kind of ripple we get. The low power mode, because I know this has low current operation and we're going to see how much power we need before it comes up out of that okay so that's another stage we want to look at all right let's come over here to the bench and take a look at those things and see see what we find okay guys so this is the setup we got our little eval card right down here and the inputs connections are on this side the output connections are on that side what we have here is this red and black wire coming from the lab power supply, okay? Red goes into the current meter, comes out of it, right here, the yellow wire, and goes into the positive uh, connection here. And I just soldered a couple, some copper lugs to connect to. The black one just goes directly to the other one. And then these two are from this multimeter, so we can monitor the voltage right here. As a matter of fact, you can see I have 18.5 volts in right now, 23.97 volts out. So this guy is monitoring the output voltage. It's this set of leads right here, this red and black set of leads that comes up to these alligator guys here. Now these two alligators are on the output load here. There's actually, this board has two sets of connectors for input and output, so you can use uh, multiple connectors. So I've got one of my meters wants to click off, it sounds like. Uh, this red and green lead comes from the active load and goes to this set of output terminals. And this set over here is what we're monitoring with the multimeter and with the scope probes. Now I have one scope probe here going to my uh, GWN stack scope, channel two, it's in times 10. This one's in times 10 and it's going to channel one, the GWN stack. This one here, I'm going to connect it down here. It's popped off right now. And it's going to go to this Keysight scope, who is kind of a guest today. So we'll monitor input and output voltage with multimeters and with the scope. And I'll use this guy for temperature testing. I'm also going to use this meter here for temperature testing with, uh, with this probe. And this guy here, I can directly... I gotta pull it out. I got this. I just sat this current probe on top of everything. So this guy's got a cable here. I have to set this up a little better. And I'm just gonna come over here and I'll directly, and it's perfect because it's perfect size to go down on those. And you see it in my lab right now, it's a little bit on the warm side, it's almost 27C. So now this guy here that's in the way right now. This guy is the Handtech CC65 uh, current pro, and it's going to be in the times 10 position. It's going to go to channel 3 on that GW Instech scope over there. All right, so we're going to start off looking at the things down here. Yeah, these two meters timed out on me. But we'll, we'll start off down here monitoring the input voltage as it comes up and down. Right now it's up, you can see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this voltage down until this turns off and see what that set point is. And then I'll bring it back up and it should be a little higher voltage before this comes on. Alright, let's go ahead and I'll bring it down. See, when this drops out, we'll see what voltage this guy was at, okay? Let's go ahead and do that part. Oh, by the way, right now, another measurement we wanted to take was the idle current, right? Where it's just sitting here, no load. Well, it's, it's just right at 8 milliamps okay we'll look at the scope shot to see what that looks like on the scope as well because it's kind of interesting but anyway let's go ahead and bring the voltage down all right so we're at 14 volts it's going to be somewhere below this 39 7 6 5 k4 and it's kind of it's trying to start but it dropped uh, right around 13.4, 13 and a half volts probably. 
Now I'm coming up. I'm 13.6. So it's point where it turned off. 13.7, 13.8, still not on. Yeah, I think it's starting to. Okay, right around 13.9. Uh, let's go down one more time. I'm going to drop down to about 13.8. Whoa. 13.7. 13.6. I'm going to go a little bit slower. See if I can. I'm going to go. Okay. 13.5. Okay. There's 13.5. It's still up. Okay. Right between. Uh, right around 13.4 I would say. Okay, I'll go ahead and bring this up to about, let's just run it at 19 volts. Let's just say we have a 19 volt input. Okay, and then we have a 24 volt output. So we're boosting uh, to regulated 24 volts. Okay, and so, you know, the hottest spot on the board is raised maybe one or two degrees. And that's just sitting here idling, so we wouldn't expect it. But we just want to take a picture just so we can have a reference point to start with. But right now, yeah, there's really no power being dropped. 7 milliamps at 19 volts in. Okay, guys. And right now, I cranked up the uh, Kunkin KP184 active load to 1.26 amps on the output, which gives us 30 watts on the output. So the input... We're dropped just below 18.8 because of our lead. I'm just going to bring it up to 19 just to make the math easier and a nice round number. And the current's at 1.63 amps. And at 30 watts, what I'll point out here is this guy here tells me what the fixed cursor in the center is reading. And then I've got a green one and a red one that jump around to try to find either the coldest or hottest spot. So the red one's kind of hard to see because it's usually sitting on something red. <laughs> the, but the one here in the center, I'm moving between the chip, 35.6, and the inductor, 35.8 or 9. So, you know, about, say, 36C from about 27C. So maybe we raised 9 degrees. So it's still very cool. Barely feels like it's raising temperature. Okay, and so if I use this little thermocouple, I'm seeing about 36.4 on that control chip, and about 37.6 on the inductor. Okay, guys, and I've raised it to 80 watts. You might hear the power supply buzzing a little bit louder. I think it's stabilized right around 40, 43. Here's the thermal probe, 41.8, about 45.7. It's raised a few tenths. All right, so I went to 110 watts on the output, and it did not climb a whole lot in temperature. We got about 47 degrees, maybe 48. So that's like 49. Okay, so it raised a little bit. It's slowly increasing, but yeah, right there it looks like it's leveled off at 49.6, and. Is right around 47. I think just putting the thermal cup one cools it off a little bit. So it seems like it's kind of stabilized. All right, guys. So this is pretty impressive. I raised it to 140 watts out, and those little parts just don't seem to be heating up much. I'm seeing about 55 degrees C, maybe. Okay, let's see what the thermal couple here gives. 51.7. It's not moving. 51.8. I mean, it's almost stabilized. It's barely moving. I mean, you know what, guys? I'm super impressed. 140 watts that little guy's putting out. That's, you know, geez. Those parts are half inch square each. Or were well, they actually a little smaller than that? And as far as height goes, they're, they're really low height parts. Very impressive. <laughs> Alright guys, this is 150 watts and it's blowing me away. This guy's barely getting over 60 degrees. I mean, look at that. That's just... That's just barely over get, getting over 60, I think. That's crazy. Let's get this thermocouple on here. Okay, we're over 60. That's at the point where you don't want to leave your finger on something too long. 60.1. I think the again we're the 
stabilization point where the probe actually drops the temperature. 56. So those guys are optimized so the temperature on each one is is they're kind of tracking so you don't really have a hot spot and I'm sure they're self heating across the board you know heating each other up too alright guys so it's been running there for a few minutes and I can hear my load back there just whining away it doesn't really like this but 55.8 56 61 5 yeah, the temperatures aren't really changing too much, so they're looking pretty good. Let's do some uh, load transients and see that behavior. All right, guys, power's on. I got the input voltage up to 19. This is the HP 6247 or the old Harrison power supply. And there's my red and black leads. And then over here, I've got the Kunkin active load. So what we'll do is we'll focus on the scope screen. That way I think you can see the transients and I think I'll leave the Kunk and Load in. Okay and this is the GW Instech oscilloscope. You can see the channel 1 is the yellow probe, channel 2 is the blue, and channel 3 is the current probe. Okay and then if I just come over here and select channel 1, you can see DC 1 meg inverts off full bandwidth 10x. Channel 2 should be the same. Channel 3, however, I've got set for current instead of voltage. And I also have bandwidth limit to 20 meg. So I limit it to 20 meg. And that's because the current probe's not that wideband anyway. So there's no sense in having any high frequency stuff come in so anyway I don't know if it really made a difference when I hit that button but I just thought I'd go ahead and do it anyway okay so I have a uh, channel 1 channel 2 both set at 5 volts per division channel 3 is at 200 milliamps per division we'll start there for now at the low current inputs and 500 microseconds per division I guess we'll start there and channeling uh, triggering on channel 3 to start with that's the current rising edge 60 milliamps and DC coupled then down here I've selected some measurements uh, channel 1 uh, RMS channel 2 RMS so you can see it's on right now channel 1 is 20 volts channel 2 is 24 peak to peak at 600 millivolts uh, boy it looks like a straight line right RMS currents like 200 milliamps but I'm going to zero out the meter right now. Let me do that quick. I just degauss it really good. Okay, it looks good there. And we'll hook it back up. Okay, so now we're down around 7 milliamps. It, was, it agrees with the Tektronix TX3 meter. So that's look, looking good now. And then I also have peak to peak and about 40 milliamps. This is the no load situation. So you know what? I am going to AC couple the voltage probe, channel 2, so that we can look at the ripple on it. I'll just push that in, center this thing, and then we're, we're going to go to where we can see some ripple. There we go. 10 millivolts per channel. I think I'm going to have to trigger on channel 2. Come over here and source channel 2. There we go. All right, now look at that. Let me just spread it out so we can see a couple waveforms. All right, looks bad, but this is 10 millivolts per division. So it's two divisions below and about two divisions above with this spike right here. So now if I freeze that, because it's writing a bunch of images over the top of each other. All right, now, you know, just to mention, as I'm reading these voltages, I just have the normal ground strap on the scope tip. I'm not using the little springy thing. I'm not going right to the terminals with the with the nice little uh, test terminals that the eval card made available. My scope probe didn't quite fit in those holes. They were kind of small. So some of this high frequency stuff, if I did a 20 meg bandwidth limit on it, it would clean it up. Just to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and try it. Channel 2 will go to 20 meg. Okay, there we go. Yeah, see that looks a lot cleaner. So 
uh, that's 20 meg that's way above the frequency that we're looking at so that we're just picking up a lot of noise because of that ground strap so those things are important when you're trying to take really accurate measurements but what you can see though is uh, basically two, uh, two grids up and down peak to peak and 10 millivolts each, that's 20 millivolts down, 20 millivolts up. Now my peak to peak measurement is saying 50. That's because I got an extra 10 with this spike right here. Now if I turn on my, see now the waveform jumped up here and I'm zooming in down here. So let me zoom in. And that wave kind of jumps up and then comes down like that. So my record length is 10K as far as deep memory goes. So I'm hardly using any deep memory. There's one mega points. Some scopes um, start off with only one meg. And that looks better. But I can go to 10 meg on this one. And you can see the resolution, the extra resolution I get. One meg, 100k points. So, anyway, so that's deep memory there. Take it out, back off to zoom. And I'll just spread it out this way. So, that's what it looks like at low load. So it looks bad when you zoom in, right? But when you realize it's only 50 millivolts peak to peak and about 18 and a half millivolts RMS, that's not too bad. Now this could be even further filtered with a, a small uh, LC filter, but, but it's not bad. And this is no load situation. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start increasing the load so that we can see when it comes out of this pulse skipping mode okay this low load and this is just one of those characteristics we want to see how much load we need uh, and what it looks like as it starts as you start increasing load right now we're you know seven milliamp uh, just overhead operating current okay so all right so I'm I've got the Kunkin load turned on okay there's two milliamp load nine milliamp you notice it looked like the frequency changed. Okay, there we go. Now there's uh, going into a little higher frequency. So it's pulse skipping, but it's not skipping as many pulses now. You see that? Pretty interesting waveforms. Uh, peak to peak, the values really haven't changed. Now if I go like this where I can see a lot of waves, it's one millisecond per. You can see sometimes it's skipping a lot, and then sometimes it's hitting a lot. Here's skipping a lot. So that's interesting, right? Okay, so I'm gonna, it's 20 milliamp load. I'm gonna bring it up, okay, and I'm at 60 milliamps. Looks like it's kind of the same thing. Now, uh, by the way, this is about one point, well, there's about one and a half watts right there. And you can see the peak to peak's getting a little bit higher now. Okay, let's zoom back in on that. Okay, so I'm gonna move this trigger to the top of the screen to try to capture the larger peaks. I'm going to have to go to another, okay, there's 20 millivolts per division. And I'm bringing my trigger line up to see where I start capturing some points right there. You can see it, it pulsed, pulsed again, and then it skips a bunch, and then pulses again. And you can see kind of the crazy action up here. Okay, that's one watt. Let's take it up to about three watts. Okay, that's about three watts. Looks like it's still skipping. This guy's rated for some fairly high power. All right, guys, so I got a few more pulses so you can kind of see. You can kind of see the action up here. Now, that's at 3 watts, all right? Let's take it 10 watts. Let's approach 10 watts, see what happens. And by the way, that's 151 milliamps in. There's 250 milliamps. You can see a lot more pulses starting to come in. And that's about 6 watts. Okay, that's 8 watts. It's 92, 93 millivolts peak to peak. 15 millivolts RMS, so it's still relatively low ripple. Okay, that's 15 watts. It looks like it's uh, starting to hit all the pulses. Okay, that's 20 watts. All right, so you know what? Now what we want to do is um, look at this a little closer. I'll bring my trigger down because it's, there we go. Now we're triggering better. Okay, so that's about the peak, and it's about 55 millivolts peak. Now, by the way, the purple one's the current, right? You see the current going up? But um, now, one thing about this Kunk and Load, it's also rated for 40 amps and 400 watts. And these low power modes, I found out this Kunkin has 
quite a bit of ripple at the low power levels. That could also be totally influencing this, especially this low frequency ripple we see up here. If you see it's kind of like, you know, it looks like it's being modulated. I'm pretty sure that's my Kunkin load. And I have a, another uh, load that's so better, but it's really noisy. <laughs> All right, there's 20 watts. The chip is totally cool. Okay, so we're at 20 watts, and we can see the frequency here. This thing's kind of bouncing around. It's it's going for all over the place because I think it's still skipping pulses a little bit. I'm gonna throw my cursors up there. All right, so I've got the cursors up. Bring this one over to right about. I guess we go to the peak of the waveform where I'm triggering. Okay, get this guy over here. So it's about 840 kilohertz. All right, so let's go ahead and take the current up. 30 watts. Looks like frequency is about the same. We're starting to get a better reading over here. When it's skipping pulses and that, this thing's bouncing around. The guy has a hard time reading that. Okay, there's 60 watts. Here, I'm going to just take it out of zoom mode. And because this looks all pretty consistent, and we'll just fill the screen up with the waveform. Now, by the way, you, you see a little bit of a little bit of low frequency ripple. That's probably my kunk and load. Okay, there's 60 watts, and we're still running cool. But you notice the ripple, the peak peak ripple is not changing a whole lot. We're getting about 127 millivolts peak peak, and about 32 millivolts RMS. Okay, we'll take. I'm at 130 watts. I'm gonna go to 154 watts. Yikes. Okay, they're not getting hot yet. I'm going to drop the amplitude just so we can see the full picture. This guy is saying about 200 millivolts. It's about 50 mil, uh, millivolts per. Looks about 100 down, about 50, 75 up. You know what? That doesn't look too bad at all. It's about 51 millivolts. Now, this is on 24 volt output, so that is not too bad for 24 volts. That's pretty darn good, I think. All right, so that's, that's what it looks like. Let's do some step loads. I think the ripple looks pretty decent. And it looks like it, you know, down around, what was it, 10 watts, where it went into, here, let's drop the power down. Let's see when it starts pulse skipping. I'm at 35 watts, there's 13 watts. You can see my kunk and load bouncing around. Okay, I'm at 12 watts, there's 10. Yeah, it's starting to skip now. You see, it looks like it's, it, you know, it's got, a, it's got a few skip pulses. That's uh, 11 watts. Okay, that's looking pretty steady there. That's about 15 watts. So right around 15 watts maybe is where it comes out of the pulse skipping mode. There's 18 watts and definitely by 20 we were looking good. So there's 20. So all right, so that's kind of the pulse skipping mode and the high power mode. Now let's do some load steps. All right guys, so what I did is I changed my current probe to a 20x probe um, so that I can get the higher currents. I've also set the current for channel three, the current probe. You can see me moving the trigger level. It's set at one amp right there. So that's why this guy's kind of skipped around. This is the ripple with no load. Reason I left it on AC couple because I want to see what kind of bounce we get in this output. And our input's up here still. Okay, we're gonna. I just set the scope for single trigger. So the question mark's on sitting there waiting for something to happen. It's waiting for something to cross over that and it's set for here. So as soon as something crosses over that uh, that grid, that right there, one amp in the center, it is going to trigger. So I'm gonna turn on load. All right guys, and here we go, hitting the button. All right, I'm gonna turn it off. Um, that's fairly uneventful. You can see the input voltage sagged a little bit with the load, but uh, when I hit that button, it comes up pretty darn slow. This is two milliseconds per division, so yeah, it just went from one ripple to the constant ripple, and it went from this lower peak to peak to you know the peak to peak we saw before, which is you know around 170 or something. So what we got to do is do a faster pulse. All right, here let's apply that load. Here we go. And that is not bad, guys. I mean, that dropped 200 millivolts and then came right up. It, now, it didn't come up and ring. It just came up and settled in. 
I'm going to scoot this over and do it again so we can see more of what's going on to make sure this is going well. We'll scoot this over here to the left side of the screen, right on that first grid. All right, let's try that again. All right, here we go. Wow, pretty darn fast. Look at that, that's pretty great. And zoom in on that guy. All right, so when I zoom in, you can see the input voltage actually sagged and rang a little bit. Kind of dropped down, it's about five volts, dropped to almost four volts. Uh, due to the, the long wiring I have to the board. Uh, that dropped a little bit. It also kind of rang a little bit, but even with that ringing on the input voltage and the current going from zero to one amp per division, one, two, three, four, five, almost six amps, the output only dropped 200 millivolts per. This says 512 millivolts peak, the peak to peak, so it thinks this is a peak, and that's a peak. Yeah, that's about right, half a volt maybe. But it's looking at, there's a little peak just before it dropped as it turned on and started switching, and then it dropped. But it's two divisions, about 400 millivolts drop, and then came up. So that is, on a 25 volt output, that is pretty darn respectable. Yeah, I like this, that's good. All right, one more test. We're gonna apply the load, and then we're gonna remove it. I'm gonna change it to the falling edge of the current. All right here we go. I'm going to apply the load and it might trigger, so I have to re trigger it. But anyway, here we go. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to remove the load. Okay, there we go. So, uh, here, let me zoom out. Okay, so what we're seeing here, here, I'm going to get rid of the cursor box. Okay, what we see is the current dropping off as I remove the load, and it actually dropped off a lot slower, probably because of maybe because of capacitance on the board. Not sure. And the ripple, the output kind of went up about 200 millivolts and drooped back down. So it wasn't an instant drop off. I'm not sure why. Here, let's turn off the zoom. Okay, so it dropped off and then dropped again. That's interesting. But you can see the output, it kind of, so the second drop, it popped up about not quite 200 millivolts and then went into the pulse skipping. So pretty darn well behaved, I think. And that was kind of a crazy uh, load drop. We can try one more. Wow, I just find that an interesting load uh, dump. So I removed the, the load, but then there's really almost a, a minimum load once I remove it. And so the converter just runs and drains, I think, the onboard capacitors and then it just drops off and then it goes into light load but yeah the converter looks well behaved through that though now there is this little spike here just as it takes a second drop let's zoom in on that all right so i zoomed in on that little spike as the load took the second drops, so now it looks flat because it's just right here at the very bottom just before it goes to no load. And it just looks like some noise. It's, uh, again, 200 millivolts per, so it's about 300 millivolts peak to peak. This says 400 millivolts peak to peak. Um, so some switching noise there. And again, the, the scope probes are, are not ideal for this, so they could be picking up some extra noise there. But yeah, overall, here, to turn off the zoom. Overall, the, uh, the, the converter itself seems to be operating really well during uh, full. Now that's going from a pretty darn high load where we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven amps. We're up here at seven amps on 24 volts and then we drop off. So that is a pretty serious load. The chips are only lukewarm. The chip and the inductor. All right, guys, that looks good. All right, that is an impressive board. Yeah, that blows me away. 150 watts. I was actually getting afraid to take it that high just that here. I'm always afraid of things blowing up, but God, you know, I, it's just hard to believe those little parts can just, well, I guess be that efficient, right? If you're that efficient, you're not dissipating much heat. So, wow, 150 watts output. Pretty cool. 
the output voltage looked well behaved uh, low ripple you know interesting to to look at the different behaviors and it's good to know and understand those things but well you know what if you've got a product that you're designing and you need to have a nice regulator putting out some high power and you don't have a lot of space or even if you do have space and you want to just save it that right there looks like a part that I'm really interested in. Alright, hey guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.